Chroma-based audio features have turned out to be a powerful tool for analyzing, comparing and processing music data. In this presentation, I want to introduce these features and I want to show how they can be applied in music navigation and retrieval applications. Actually, music can be represented in various ways, for example, visually by means of sheet music or acoustically by means of CD recordings or MP3 files. Furthermore, one may have symbolic representations such as music XML, MIDI files, literature on music, music videos, singing voices or dance motions. In the field of music processing or music information retrieval, one main goal is to develop technologies that allow users to access, explore or simply enjoy music in all its different facets. As an example, I want to discuss the task of music synchronization. To this end, let us consider Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, the symphony with the famous fade motif. For this piece of music, one has a large number of music recordings performed by different orchestras or played in different arrangements. Let us listen to a version conducted by Karajan. Compare this with the piano reduced version, here played by Shabakov. As you can notice, recordings of the same piece of music may differ significantly in aspects such as instrumentation, timbre, dynamics or tempo. Now the goal of music synchronization is to automatically link these versions by assigning time positions in one recording to musically corresponding time positions in the other recording. On the slide these links are indicated by the red arrows. Before I explain how these links can be computed, I want to show a small demo application, the interpretation switcher, which shows how these links can be used. Let us assume we are in a music library and want to compare different interpretations of Beethoven's fifth. Then the switcher allows a user to simultaneously open all available versions. In this example, a MIDI version a Bernstein, Savalisch and Scherbakov version. Then, playing back one version, you may switch seamlessly to any other version. For example, from the Bernstein to the Scherbakov version. Note that the Shabakov version is much faster than the Bernstein version. Let us now switch to the synthesized MIDI version. Also, the linking structure allows you to jump to any position within any version. Then, all other versions jump to the musically corresponding position. So, this interface opens up novel ways for cross-version music comparison and navigation. Now, to compute the linking structures, one basically proceeds in two steps. First, one converts the waveform-based music recordings into suitable feature representations. These features need to be robust to aspects that are irrelevant for the music processing task at hand while still being discriminative enough for solving this task. In the synchronization context, so-called chroma features have turned out to be a suitable mid-level feature representation. These features are robust to variations in instrumentation, timbre or dynamics, 
while capturing characteristic information that correlates to the harmonic progression. On the basis of such chroma features, one can then compute the linking structure by applying alignment techniques, as also used in text or speech processing, to deal with local and global tempo variations. I will now explain what chroma features are and how they can be computed. To this end, let us consider the chromatic scale as an example. In the first step, one computes a short time Fourier transform. Here, you see the resulting magnitude spectrogram where the horizontal axis corresponds to time and the vertical axis to frequency. Furthermore, the color red indicates high intensity, whereas the color blue, low intensity. Note that the fundamental frequencies of the nodes behave in some exponential fashion. In particular, playing a node one octave higher increases the fundamental frequency by a factor of two. For example, the node C5 has a fundamental frequency of 523 Hz, whereas the node one octave higher, the C6, has a fundamental frequency of 1046 Hz. In the next step, the frequency axis is converted using a logarithmic scale. This can be done by suitably pooling and interpolating the spectral coefficients. In the resulting log frequency spectrogram, the fundamental frequencies now depend on the musical notes in some linear fashion. This representation can be thought of decomposing the audio signal into subbands that correspond to the MIDI pitches or to the notes of a piano keyboard. Here, each subband reveals the respective pitch content of the music recording over time. When playing a note on a specific instrument, one does not only has the fundamental frequency of the node, but also integer multiples of this frequency, the overtones or partials. The energy distribution across the partials are a crucial factor for the actual sound or timbre of the instrument. To become more robust to variations in instrumentation and timbre, one can discard the octave information. To this end, one sums up all pitch-wise subbands that differ by one or several octaves. This yields 12 accumulated subbands, which are also referred to as chroma subbands. To make this point clearer, let us consider the piano keyboard, where the keys correspond to the equal tempered scale. Then the chroma attributes refer to the 12 pitch spelling attributes C, C-sharp, D, D-sharp, and so on. For example, the chroma C refers to all C notes, irrespective of the octave, let it be a high C or a low C. Similarly, the chroma C-sharp refers to all C-sharp notes. As a side remark, let me mention that in the equal tempered scale, a C-sharp is the same as a D-flat. In this way, one obtains a so-called chroma representation, or chroma cram, where the audio signal is decomposed into 12 chroma subbands. Finally, we apply a column-wise normalization, which makes the feature representation invariant to variations in dynamics. The resulting normalized chroma cram is a sequence of 12-dimensional vectors where each vector encodes the signal's short time energy distribution relative to the 12 chroma subbands. As you can see, with increasing pitch of our chromatic scale, the chroma values cyclically wrap around the vertical chroma axis. This property is also revealed by the following sonification of the chroma cram, where a chroma is represented by means of a Shepard tone, a superposition of sine waves separated by octaves.
To further highlight the properties of chroma features, let us come back to our music synchronization scenario with the two recordings of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Recall that the orchestral version and the piano version differ significantly in timbre, thus leading to rather different waveforms. Therefore, when computing the linking structure, a direct comparison on the basis of the waveforms is not going to work. Instead, we convert the waveforms into chroma representations. This not only reduces the data rate, but also brings the two versions much closer together. Indeed, the two resulting chromagrams exhibit very similar patterns. Furthermore, the chromagrams reveal musically relevant information. For example, Beethoven's fifth starts with a G. Thus, at the beginning, the energy of the signals is concentrated in the G subbands. Then the symphony continues with an E flat, or D sharp when considering the equal tempered scale. This is again reflected by the energy distributions of the two chromagrams. More generally, the chroma representations closely correlate to the harmonic progression of the underlying piece of music. This progression is actually similar for both versions, the orchestral and the piano version. This also becomes evident when listening to the sonifications of the two chroma crumbs. First, let us listen to the chroma crumb with the orchestral version in the background. Next, you hear the chroma crumb for the piano version. On the basis of such chroma features, one can then compute the linking structure by applying alignment and time warping techniques. To this end, one compares the elements of the two chroma sequences in a pairwise fashion. This yields a distance matrix where the color black indicates a small distance between two chroma vectors and the color white a large distance. For example, here we compare the chroma vector at second 5 of the Karajan version with the chroma vector at second 7 of the Sherbakov version. These two vectors are very similar, thus leading to a small distance. Using the distance matrix as a cost function, one can compute a cost-minimizing alignment path which is indicated by the red dots. Such an optimal path can be computed efficiently using dynamic programming. The procedure is also known as dynamic time warping and has been developed in the context of speech processing. Each red dot yields a link between time positions of the two feature sequences. This linking structure constitutes our final synchronization result. Note that I have only described the basic ideas for a music synchronization procedure. For practical applications, many other issues become important, such as the temporal resolution of the synchronization result or the efficiency and online capability of the alignment step. I want to close this presentation with another synchronization scenario and an application to multimodal music navigation and retrieval. Here, one starts with a visual representation and an acoustic representation of the same piece of music. For example, scanned images of sheet music and a music recording of Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata. Then the synchronization task consists in assigning pixel positions in the image data to musically corresponding time positions in the audio recording. To this end, one needs to convert the data into suitable mid-level representations. Here one can again use chroma features. On the one hand, the music recording is converted into an audio chroma crumb using methods from digital signal processing. On the other hand, to process the image data, one requires techniques such as optical music recognition to extract node parameters from the sheet music. From these parameters, it is then straightforward 
to derive an image chromagram. On the basis of these chroma sequences, one can then compute the linking structure as before. The computed linking structures can be used to realize novel ways for multimodal music interaction. Here you see a demo of a prototype interface that allows for synchronously presenting visual information, musical measures, and acoustic information, a music recording. Then, simply by clicking on a musical measure in the image domain, you can navigate within the audio domain and vice versa. You can also select a query by marking certain measures in the image domain. Then a cross-modal search retrieves all musically related recordings where the green rectangles correspond to the matching audio fragments. For example, this match here is a performance played on a historic piano. A Hammerklavier as used in Beethoven's time. In conclusion, I have introduced the concept of chroma features and discussed how they can be computed. Furthermore, as illustrating applications, I have discussed two music synchronization scenarios, which open up new possibilities for music navigation and retrieval. At this point, I want to note that there are many ways of computing and enhancing chroma features. So there is no chroma feature per se, but a large number of chroma variants with different properties. For some of these chroma variants, our chroma toolbox contains MATLAB implementations, which are freely available on the web for research purposes. Last but not least, I want to thank my co-authors for the work this presentation is based on.